Hey friends, uh, coming to you from Santa Barbara, where it recently rained and is now cloudy and sunny. It's Toshin, your pal. Uh, this guy on the internet with a multicolored coat. Thanks to Kitten for that. Uh, <laughs> I'm in a silly mood right now, so we're just rolling with it. I want to do another sort of like practice report video where I talk about some practices that have been useful for me and fun. <laughs> yeah, um, there's a lot going on inside and that's good, but I want to sort of talk about a couple of them. Um, this is not by any means extensive, but the two I want to talk about are TRE, or trauma release exercises, and believe it or not, speaking or praying in tongues. Not a practice I saw myself taking up, but has been very useful to me recently. Uh, let's see, how do we want to go about this? <clears throat> so, I wrote an essay a couple few months ago called Tashin Can Meditate as a Treat that summarized a lot of shifts in my view on meditation and the specific way that I practiced it from, yeah, really like an upgrade from the way I saw it from, <clears throat> excuse me, maybe 18 to 28, 30. Uh, at a certain point, what had worked for me previously broke over a period of months, and the way that I had seen meditation sort of, which had been useful for a long time, stopped being the way that I wanted to see things. Uh, the way that felt useful, really, really on a somatic level. Like, it didn't feel good. Um, in particular, I really didn't want to sit, did not want to do formal seated meditation, and I just, after leaving the monastery, like, entirely dropped at a certain point, like, a daily practice. A daily practice, which was really important to me for many years. Um, and you know, practice is happening informally all the time, all the time, of course. There's momentum, momentum, um, which is good. And it took me a while to find a new view of practice and a new style of practice that uh, resonated, resonated. And that essay summarizes how it came to how I came to see things, which which centers around this word recharging. Recharging, that one has been really helpful for me as a metaphor. Uh, not unrelated to this energy video I made recently. It's like, I am a battery and I need to be recharged and also the capacity needs to grow over time. Um, and so I wanna talk about two manifestations of this recharging metaphor, neither of which are formal seated meditation practice, but both of which are really doing it for me these days. This might change, and this, uh, this, this is what's working for me, a singular person right now. These might not work for you. I'm not necessarily advising you take them up. You do you and I'll do me. I'm just talking a lot here and you don't have to watch the video if you don't want to. This is my vlog. It's a video log, it's a journal. I'm just talking loud because it's fun. Um, and sharing it in case it's useful or interesting. So, I did trauma release exercises, I don't know, maybe five or six years ago at this point. I think it would have been 2017 or 2018. And I got very interested in it for like a week and read a book about it and watched some videos about it, watched some YouTube videos, watched like a DVD. And I just kind of take it, took it and run, ran with it. And the basic idea is, if you're not familiar, um, I'll link to something about it from the integral guide in the links, but the basic idea is like trauma is stored in the body, it's tension in the body, and you, like as an animal, which we are, we often forget we are animals, we can actually release it through this built-in mechanism of shaking. And uh, animals in the wild that aren't humans do this naturally, but because we're humans and we're sort of self-domesticated or something, although I doubt they'd use that word. Uh, we forget to do that and we teach our kids not to do that and just like sit still in school, young man. 
uh, which must have happened to me. Like, I don't have any acute memories of this, but I do have memories of having like a ton of energy as a kid and that just getting sort of shut down over time and getting smaller and less loud and quieter and more scared and more shy. And as you can see, that's unwinding itself. It's unwinding itself. I feel kind of like a kid again. I'm, I forget how that saying from Jesus goes, but like, unless we become as kids, you know, we can't enter the kingdom of heaven or something. Not that I'm there, but feels good. I feel happy. And uh, so there's a bunch of ways to get into this. I don't know. If you're interested in this, you should just go watch some videos about it. One of the nice bonuses of it, the claim is, at least that I remember it, is that it doesn't tend to bring up a lot of content or memories or even necessarily feelings, which has been my experience. I, I will cry a lot, but I think that's because I've done a lot of biomotive, which I also love. Uh, but it doesn't bring up like images or strong traumatic memories or something like that. I think there are exceptions and I don't know, you have to see what your own experience is if you try it. But like, that's one of the possible benefits of this particular practice is you release trauma without it being like re-traumatizing necessarily. You just shake. All you have to do is shake. And there's a bunch of different ways to shake and you can get to like whole body shaking. And um, that's nice. It feels really good. That's one of the main things is because I'd practiced this over the years, it was like, oh, this feels good. This feels good. And so I would shake. And a couple of months ago, I was hanging out with my friend Nat Nat Sharp and I was talking about shaking and we we're shaking together. And he mentioned, it just so happened we were kind of talking about religion and stuff and he mentioned, I forget how it came up exactly, but speaking in tongues and praying in tongues and um, that the community he'd grown up in, that was a practice there. And I was like, oh, I had this big lightning bolt moment. We were shaking, doing TRE while we had this conversation. And I was like, oh, oh shit. Like, <clears throat> what's happening in the body with TRE or trauma release exercises or shaking, which I love and which feels good for me, like in a certain way, you can see speaking in tongues as the same thing, but with the conceptual mind, with the intellectual mind. And it can also be an activity of prayer, of course, that's how that practice is traditionally viewed. But I'd done a lot of work in, in at different points of my meditation practice of like going non-conceptual. Believe it or not, I know he thinks and talks a lot, but I have done a little bit of work on that. Just a little bit, just a little bit. He cannot think for one moment. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I was like, oh, all of this practice I've done in the past can be accessed through speaking in tongues and it's actually sort of the same activity or sort of activity or complementary to TRE. And we started doing it together. And that's a whole other story, but we're shaking and doing speaking in tongues. Um, that's great. I love the whole Sharp family. They're so, I don't know, many things. They're good friends of mine and we had a great time in my most recent visit with them. Um, but anyway, point being that night, I discovered these two things go together like peanut butter and jelly. Uh, they are great. And since then, I've periodically been practicing not only shaking, but also speaking in tongues or praying in tongues. And, and recently I was doing a bit of vocal training with someone and a friend of mine from Twitter. And I was like, oh, it, it just sort of automatically wants to become musical. Like I'll shake and I'll speak in tongues and then it starts becoming singing. Like I've done a lot of singing and chanting training and this most recent update of some vocal training. It's like, oh, it just wants to become singing. So there I am like sometimes even in the shower or walking down the street, I'm, I'm, I'm shaking and I'm speaking in tongues and it just becomes singing in tongues and it's whole body, whole music. And I'm trying to get into that non-conceptual mind and my body physically feels good. And my head is like empty. Although sometimes like thoughts pop up and then I let them go and just like back to this, back to this. And um, I, you know, I, I'm feeling a little self-conscious. I'm not gonna demonstrate at this moment, but man, they go together really well. And uh, it relaxes the body, the shaking relaxes the body, the non-conceptual mind sort of relaxes the thinking mind, concepts, ways of seeing. And um, 
yeah, it really does steer towards a kind of prayer for me, where it's this like soulful, non-conceptual, devotional worship that is becomes song and dance and prayer to God. Uh, it just happens if I let it, and I love it. And I think I'm going to be exploring more of this sort of thing. It's interesting because I'm about to sort of start this music development, music production arc. Uh, and I just see myself wanting to weave this kind of prayer into the songs that I make, even if they're like EDM or something. Um, so we'll see how that whole journey goes. But I wanted to share this practice report. And uh, yeah, just reflect on it. It sort of like feels like a moment in a much longer journey. And it's fun to fun to share. And uh, mm, I don't know. If you feel like trying it, you can. You might not want to. It might not feel good for you. You know what's best for you. Um, you're the one actually experiencing your body and your mind and your heart, but this is what's working for me right now and felt good to share that.